Okay, um, there's uh, the Tompkins County Legislature is working on a road preservation law, um, and they've gone back and forth quite a bit. They're having a um, meeting. They're going to take it up at a public hearing on August 16th at 530. Um, and I have a copy of the law if you want to see it. And I'm sure you can get it on the county's website. Um, we will eventually need to be working on a similar sort of thing. Uh, connect. They have different issues because they have different road um, legal um, rights to regulate things legally differently than towns do, the county does. But um, the, there is, there's been a lot of discussion for many months on the road subcommittee of the, the Tompkins County Task Force on Natural Gas Drilling. Um, and among the municipalities of trying to do the best that we can to have um, to work on a similar sort of road preservation law that has similar triggers for kicking in and so that you could make uh, haul routes because they're going to go between municipalities and they're going to use county roads and municipal roads and so there's still a lot of discussion on that and um, a few municipalities have gone with a sort of full package approach by Delta Engineering that we had a presentation many months ago on. Um, and then a, a few others are just looking at different, of which we're one, looking at different options. And we've started gathering our data on the current condition of the roads that I was talking about before because that's the first step that you have to have. We did not yet have that. Um, and we've been working with Enfield and Caroline. And now there's a proposal that uh, the that uh, the county chair of the county, the county highway superintendent, Bill Sesney and Joe Mariani, have been working on to, um, for a group of municipalities that whoever would want to go in to put out a, a request for proposals to firms to, to develop a, a mechanism for, for triggering and implementing a road preservation uh, law. So the towns would have their laws, but you'd have the same approach for triggering it or as similar as possible and for evaluating it and that then that company would do the 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 work that's needed once the haul routes identified and the road preservation laws triggered to to get the the data that's needed and do the, <coughs> the calculations to show if the roads being impacted and 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 um, so they wanted to know if towns what if any of the towns who don't already have this full package approach are interested in going in on that and um, Jim I've talked with Jim some about this he actually gave it to me originally and he's been talking with uh, the county and he's in support of of us participating in that um, I'll get the final um, version of what they're doing and I can bring it to a meeting the, the next meeting in in August or maybe the beginning of September uh, Liz, did you remember anything more about that than that from the TCOG discussion? So. so that's all moving along. More things to do. And then there's also a uh, the TCOG, the, which is the Tompkins County Council of Governments, passed a resolution at their last meeting to commission a land use analysis and impact assessment um, project by a company called Green Plan, who's the company who did the a study that's it's been used by the model has been used looked at by several municipalities who are working on gas drilling uh, legislation of various types um, they did it for the town of Middlefield and it's basically a full community impact assessment um, and uh, it, the proposal is called community impact assessment the potential impact of hydrofracking on land use community character and economy uh, in Tompkins County so that's what that's what the project would be, and some of the towns would would be interested in having. So they'll have to use information from all of the different towns, but some towns are interested in having a more expanded analysis done for their town, um, and and we are we've said we're potentially one of them. We have to see the cost, but um, uh, so I'm on the steering committee for that. The to the, we're going to the town can excuse me TCOG is going to try to raise money to pay for this um, 
So uh, it's not clear how much it'll cost yet, but the fee that they're hoping is not to exceed $10,000. And we're going to have a steering committee meeting on this um, next in two weeks. So um, as far as the countywide task force goes, um, Roxanne covered the community impact um, analysis. Um, we will, as happy as we are to have um, uh, Darby here as our planner, our new planner. She was also the county coordinator for the um, for the uh, task force, the gas drilling task force. So I can feel happy and sad all at the same time because uh, as she moves to Ulysses, she's going to move away from doing a huge amount of work for the county on um, gas drilling. And I have not heard if there's going to be much of a replacement. I I think with budgets the way they are, it's um likely. We'll, we'll just all have to work a little harder. But Darby, thank you so much, and, and we're looking forward to you working here. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see, the drilling task force, the other part of the meeting was that, um, as you all know, the, uh, the um, part of the, the generic environmental impact statement came out at the er in early July, and we're trying to figure out how to make it easy for municipalities to respond to that when the comment period begins. Um, so we're working to aggregate um, uh, comments that um, professionals and researchers and sort of database um, uh, comments, responses to the s -GICE, um and to pull that all together into one document that municipalities can pull from and, and um, you know, have page references back to the s -GICE and stuff. Uh, it's just too hard for little municipalities to um, go through a <coughs> plus pages. So if we can help them, that's what we're going to try and do. Um, the other, I, I won't go into a lot of details, but the working group that's dealing with um, land values and assessment, uh, mortgages and and, um, and such is very, very active, um, kind of turning over a number of stones and finding um, <laughs> Uh, shortcomings in a lot of places um, as far as the state goes and and, um, and what uh, drilling and leases are doing to people's land value and such. Um, so more on, more details on that later. Um, interestingly enough, it did seem like the state comptroller recently, Tom DiNapoli, just came out with a proposed bill on spill liability, which um, it looks to me it would um, include landowners as well as operators in liability for spills. That uh, I think that's a change, quite a quite a large change. Uh, landowners have, as far as I know, have not been um, uh, responsible. Uh, so he's looking for an uh, assembly or senator to pick this up. Um, it'll also allow the DEC to determine when a spill. Um, needs remediation. Um, prior to this, the only remedy if a private citizen has a complaint about property damages from drilling um, would be to litigate, uh, that the DEC couldn't make that determination, but um, the courts would have to make that determination. So uh, that's a pretty big deal. If the DEC can go in there, it would be much more timely. Um, and then also, in part of that, for the first time, and underlined for the first time, he's suggesting an online registry of all gas drilling related incidents in New York State. Right now, those are kept on in paper, and we can't get them electronically. Um, and lastly, he would ask for um, surcharges and bonding requirements um, to help fund those cleanup efforts. So um, that's, a pr you know, having our comptroller come out with this is a pretty strong statement. Um, then just uh, going to, that was the TCOG gas drilling task force. As far as TCOG, just a couple other things we did. Um, talk about redistricting and, and the um, district county district lines are likely to change a little bit because the population changed across the uh, across the county districts. Um, and then we did hear uh, uh, from Dominic uh, Frangillo and uh, and Michael Kaplinkalair on uh, an energy savings campaign across the county. I think that um, there's a county goal to like a 30 or 40 year goal to save. I think it's something like 2% a year on our energy. Um, and so this campaign is called Get Your Green Back, and it's um, trying to uh, meet those energy saving goals. OK, well, um, I th we'll start a little bit early with privilege of the floor. If, if anybody has any comment that they'd make, like to make to the board at this time. And could you please s say your name before you start? For uh, my name is John Coggin, uh, from the Grove. Uh, I 
a lot of people started from scratch to find out about what was going on after the leases were already uh, assigned with the hydrofracturing. It's been a long educational process to find out what was going on with it and what were the implications. There were really a lot of people within uh, the county, but also uh, within Ulysses, who did a lot of work getting signatures, uh, you know, the attorney uh, looking at the uh, case laws to see what the uh, possibilities were for the town to uh, protect itself from any, uh, you know, foreseeable damage from, from the process and other processes. Uh, people who went out and mapped, uh, you know, and did uh, drawings and, and boards to show what kind of implications, uh, how many pads and how many drills and how many truckloads of, uh, of water coming and going. Uh, and a lot of people in uh, the town of Ulysses came out and, uh, to listen to what uh, informed and experienced people had to say. So it was really a learning process <coughs> for everybody. Uh, I'd really like to thank the members of the board because I'm sure you did as much or more than anyone. And it's been a long and hard process for yourselves to come to a, a decision that you're going to make tonight. And, uh, you know, it's not been a fun process for, uh, for the members of the board, but uh, coming to the conclusion it would hopefully uh, save us. Although, you know, you still have to be vigilant because you're dealing with, you know, unlimited money, essentially. And unlimited money on a higher level state and especially federal is almost unlimited power. And, you know, I say the board deserves a lot of thanks for, you know, not only the work and effort you put in, but for taking a stand that would, you know, hopefully protect uh, the community that you represent here in Ulysses. Thank you so much, really. Appreciate it. My name is Faye Gugakis, and I'm from the city of Ithaca. Uh, I came here tonight, as I did in Dryden, New York, recently, um, to say I'm in solidarity with what you're doing here. Uh, I definitely support you doing a ban. It's very important that that happens, and it's very important that we stay united, which, again, is the reason why I'm coming from the city of Ithaca. I've been encouraging and, and going to many city council meetings where I'm telling the city to also have a ban even though they're not leased because this is something, again, where we all need to be united. This process, and again, I've educated myself uh, when I was in the town of Dryden, the people there who spoke on uh, the town of Dryden seemed to have educated themselves. So we're not ignorant here. We have a lot of factual material. This process is so undemocratic. Uh, pitting one neighbor against another neighbor. These leases were signed without people knowing what was going on. People were threatened. I have a friend in Newfield who was threatened by uh, the land, uh, what do you call it? land, uh, the guy who goes around signing leases. He said to her, if you don't sign a lease, we will see you in court. I swear that was the exact sentence and I was shocked to hear that you know but not surprised but this is this is why and aside from all the chemicals that we hear about the, the, the way how much water is good just the complete irresponsibility of the industry yet to lo yet yet alone going back in time how they were taking off the Clean Air Act and how the energy meetings under the Cheney administration were in closed doors so basically all that all that is why we need to take a stand. All that is why we need to be united. And that's why I'm here from the city of Ithaca to tell you we have to stay united and I hope you pass the ban uh, for the sake of everyone. Thank you. I'm no, sorry, anybody for my back to you. I just wanted to say my name is Nancy Young and I am very much in favor and support you in this resolution. And I wanted to be the first one to say, if you have a fundraising effort that because you guys need money to back up what you're doing, I want to be the first person to make a contribution. Just let us publicly know how to do it. Thank you. Chris Kale, Du Bois Road. Um, I had plenty of opportunity to tell you what I thought about this. I just actually wanted to speak to something that Liz brought up regarding the um, 
the liability of landowners if they're spills and so on. No, in New York, because we represent a lot of farmers, a lot of farmers having been leased, we actually really looked into this, and um, it all depends on the lease people sign. In fact, in, in lots of instances, depending on the kind of lease you signed, the landowner may be responsible for environmental damages. And, you know, I was one of the people who went and met with uh, the controller's staff, and I think they included that because in some instances the lease document lists the landowner as the responsible party. Mm -hmm. Someone else want to say something? I do. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Joanne Sapula Dennis, the town of Dryden. I came up here because um, Ulysses really gave us in Dryden the incentive to go on and uh, make sure the wording in these documents will hold up and protect the citizens of the state of New York. And I, I really appreciate your attorney and, and all of you uh, for what you're about to do tonight because I know that in the end you're going to do the right thing. You're in office to protect the citizens of Ulysses and I know that you're going to do that. And what most people don't know is tonight with a unanimous vote, I believe that the uh, constitutional rights of people who don't want to lease their land and have not will be held up because as it stands in the state of New York, if your neighbor leased, they then allow a partnership with the <coughs> oil and gas industry. And at that point, that industry can come onto that property and drill below it, turn horizontally as we know, and take someone else's gas against their will and decide what penance they decide to give you. It's un-American, it's unconstitutional, and New York is going to stop this action. You can do that. You, you have had lots of time to, to go over these facts. You have Bob Howard who's sitting back here who's done incredible, incredible work. And I thank you for that. And I just want to say that we're getting the momentum going. You'll be number three, but uh, there's soon to follow many, many more. So I appreciate your vote tonight, and I know it will be a unanimous vote to uh, save the, the people that live here. Chris Hamilton, I live on Irondale Road. I've been here a couple of years now, and I, I applaud the effort of the, the town to try to protect water and the, the land rights of landowners. But well over a third of the town of Ulysses residents can't drink their water. I can't drink my water without a special system, and neither can most of the residents on my road. So while you're doing your all you can for the hydrofracking, what are you doing for our water? I mean, I would like to see, you're going to protect water that I can't drink? I mean, that's great, but if I can't drink it, whether or not it has fracking fluid in it or I can't drink it anyways, i just like to see if we're going to protect that part, let's go the next step further and start, you know, putting portable water in the hands of our residents. I know right down the road from me, you stop, you stop bringing water, and then I know residents that were close by tried to get water from you when you went that far and you just couldn't afford to do it, so that's all. Thank you. Uh, Bob Howard from Reynolds Road, Ulysses, and also the husband of the supervisor. Uh, from personal experience, I just want to say how much work I know the town board and the supervisor and Liz put into this. And I think you've done an incredible job. I particularly applaud the town's attorney. So I think it's done an amazing job. Uh, great work. And I look forward to the I'd like to say again what I said the last time I came here. Uh, thank you, Pennsylvania. Uh, I hope it goes well. Uh, and I would encourage the board to go ahead. We have already the experiment that we can watch for 10 years or so and decide whether it's economic to go ahead, whether it's environmentally safe to go ahead. It's just foolishness at this point.
to go ahead with something when the experiment next door has just begun and we can watch it, learn from it, and do something rational rather than something hypothetical. And that was Don Ellis. <laughs> oh, sorry. But we have, this is a former town board member. Okay. Others? Yeah, there's two, three, here. Yeah, you know, we've got a couple of questions. Bonnie Matters, uh, just moved from the town of Ithaca to uh, Hinge and Post Road. And one of the reasons that uh, we had land leased all around us, but we were encouraged because Ulysses was in the forefront at that time. And now we're waiting for the vote here. The town of Ithaca has voted against it. Dryden has voted against it and uh, we're, we're hoping you guys vote against it. Um, not much for speaking, but uh, I grew up in a small town across the border, <coughs> Pennsylvania border, a little town called Moserville, Pennsylvania. And within the last six months, I went down there just to camp with my RV, and I parked in this little one-lane town <coughs> And I woke up the next morning, there was this white truck sitting on the school ground where I had parked overnight. And I wasn't really sure what it was. Well, the moral of the story, I grabbed a cup of coffee, I walked one lane town, one lane town, this is maybe 15 houses, three generations of people there. By the time I walked to the end of the block, we had counted how many? And this was like eight o'clock in the morning. We had counted probably at least five ten-wheelers coming down a back hill off the Jetson Road. Now you have two roads coming down, you have Moserville, mm -hmm. and then you have 549. Now we were parked on that school ground, that white truck was a gas truck, and then we had counted probably five <coughs> ten-wheelers coming down that hill at eight o'clock in the morning. This was a town I grew up in, and I still love today. today. I, 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 I was amazed. I'm, I'm standing there with my coffee and I'm watching these people go down roads that I grew up as a kid and played kickball in. And you wouldn't dare put a kid out there in that street right now. Troy, Pennsylvania, went to school there. Went over to a friend of mine's house up on Armenia Mountain. My sister and brother-in-law grew up there. We went up that hill and I had traveled those roads at 17, 18 years of old and, and I took a ride up there to a friend's house two Christmases ago. Dirt roads with grass in the middle were now four lane mud roads with dump trucks coming and going. We passed, I mean, we are on Armenia Mountain in the middle of nowhere. We passed fields with cargo tankers parked three high, two high. I was living in denial. <laughs> I just, I, I could not believe it. This was the Christmas of 2010, 2009. The land that I had seen as a child from probably 15 years old to 25 before I left that area had become an industrial area. I, I'm, I, I hope it doesn't happen here. Thank you. So we're still in privilege of the floor before we move on to the actions on the zoning law amendment. So. Anybody, any, would someone else like to speak? Well, we have to go through uh, the seeker uh, process and some discussion. So before we start that, if anybody wants to sit down, you're welcome to. I know you don't want to feel like you're disrupting the discussion. And again, I apologize, but we're at the limit of the chairs we have access to here. There are three seats up here. In and front. so, so you don't have to feel like you're disrupting in the middle of talk. I'm just giving a minute for people to sit down if they like. And let's go. As soon as this comes back. Okay. Okay. The next. Um,
item on the agenda is um, old business. We're going to do the seeker for the zoning law amendment. Um, the the town. Just let you introduce it. Okay, so Mariette's going to introduce the process here. So, um, what the board members have in their packets is a resolution uh, making the secret determination, and then there's the full environmental assessment form, and you need to complete part two today in order to make your determination. The action that's being considered for purposes of seeker is the zoning law amendment. It's not any actions or projects that might result from the zoning law amendment. So we're not actually looking at the kinds of activities that are being addressed in the zoning law amendment. It's the action of changing the zoning law itself. So that's why you will um, see that a lot of the answers she will be that there is no significant environmental impact. And that's because we're looking solely at the action of amending the ordinance. Is there anything else you'd like me to introduce? Um, I don't think so. Just okay. that this, um, the town has categorized this as an unlisted action. Right. And we are voluntarily choosing to use type 1 review procedures and go through the long environmental assessment form. Um, again, to determine whether the passage of the zoning ordinance in and of itself will have a negative effect on the environment. And we are, we're not going to be, we can't and we should not be thinking about the impacts of the actual drilling or any other activity affected by the zoning law change on the environment. It's, right. It took me a while of <laughs> doing these to mm -hmm. get my mind around that, but that's how it is. <laughs> so, um, everybody has that um, project Part two, project impacts and their magnitude. So I guess I'll just go down each one and go through the, and, and we have a draft of this prepared by our staff, our town um, zoning staff, planning staff, Alex prepared this for us. So impact on land, one, will the proposed action result in a physical change to the project site? No. Does everyone agree with that? Two, will there be an effect to any unique or unusual landforms found on the site, cliffs, dunes, geological formations? No. Will proposed action affect any water body designated as protected under Articles 15, 24, 25 of the Environmental Conservation Law? No. Will proposed action affect any non-protected existing or new body of water? No. Will proposed action affect surface or groundwater quality or quantity? No. If anybody has anything that they'd like to discuss or discuss changing, just jump in. Otherwise, I'll continue this way. Will proposed action alter drainage flow or patterns or surface water runoff? No. Impact on air. Will proposed action affect air quality? No. Will proposed action affect any threatened or endangered species? No. Well, that's impact on plants and animals. Sorry. Will proposed action substantially affect non-threatened or non-endangered species? No. Impact on agricultural land resources. Will proposed action affect agricultural land resources? No. Impact on aesthetic resources. Will proposed action affect aesthetic resources? No. Impact on historic and archaeological resources. Will proposed action impact any site or structure of historic, prehistoric, or paleontological importance? No. Impact on space, open space and recreation. Will proposed action affect the quantity or quality of existing or future open spaces or recreational opportunities? No. Impact on critical environmental areas. Will proposed action impact the exceptional or unique characteristics of a critical environmental area established pursuant to subdivision 6NYCRR614.14G? No. Impact on transportation. Will there be an effect to existing transportation systems? No. Impact on energy. Will proposed action affect the community's sources of fuel or energy supply? No. Noise and odor impact. Will there be objectionable odors, noise, or vibration as a result of the proposed action? No. Impact on public health. Will proposed action affect public health and safety? No. Impact on growth and character of community or neighborhood. 
Will proposed action affect the character of the existing community? No. Is there or is there likely to be public controversy related to the potential adverse environmental impacts of the action? No. Okay, so does everybody agree? All the board members agree with this? Any questions or issues before we move on to the resolution? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. The resolution, I will read the resolution. Um, proposed local law number two, this is the seeker for proposed local law number two of 2011 to amend the zoning law of the town of Ulysses to clarify that natural gas and or petroleum exploration, extraction, support activities, and the transfer, storage, treatment, or disposal of natural gas and or petroleum exploration and production waste is prohibited in the town of Ulysses. Whereas this action is this is the seeker resolution. Whereas this action is the enactment of a local law amending the town of Ulysses zoning law, a copy which is of which is attached below, and whereas this is an unlisted action for which the town of Ulysses board is utilizing type one procedures and acting as lead agency in an environmental re review with respect to the enactment of this local law, and whereas the town board at a regular meeting held on June 14, 2011, directed that the long environmental assessment form parts one and two for this action, hereafter referred to as the LEAF, prepared by town planning staff, be sent to the Tompkins County Planning Department for review pursuant to sections 239L and M of the general municipal law, and whereas the town board of the town of Ulysses has reviewed the LEAF, now therefore be it resolved that the town of Ulysses Town Board hereby accepts the LEAF as adequate, and it is further resolved that the Town of Ulysses Town Board hereby makes a negative determination of environmental significance in accordance with Article 8 of the Environmental Conservation Law and 6 NYCRR Part 617 New York State Environmental Quality Review for the above referenced action as proposed based on the information in the EAF Part 1 and for the reasons set forth in the EAF Part 2, and therefore a draft environmental impact statement will not be required. So I'm moving this resolution. Second. Okay. Discussion? Yeah, I would just like to comment that we're not taking this lightly, that the town board, with the help of the planning board and others, has been considering this for over a year, and we've uh, collectively done a lot of research on this and I think that the declaration should be a super negative really because uh, passing this will help preserve the rural character of our town and also um, help protect the health and safety of its residents you know, based on all, all of the research that's been done so I'm I I don't know that there's an allowance for a super negative declaration. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my statement. So. Okay. Any, any other board? Can you use the microphone, please? We can't really hear it. Here. Okay. Uh, any other comments? No? Um, okay, Marcia, I'm going to have roll call votes for these. So okay. Can you do that, please? Evan? Aye. Lucia? Aye. David? Aye. Liz? Aye. Roxy? Aye. Okay. All eyes. Now that we have made a seeker determination of no environmental impact, we will move to the uh, resolution on the local law. Okay. Um, the. Should I read? The local, the local law has been available. I don't need yes. to it. Right. Okay, so I, I'm not going to read the local law into the record. It's been available for a long time. It's on our website. Um, I'm going to read the resolution that we have adopting the local law. And um, the resolution has a an appendix with it that is um, 
12 pages long, so I'm not going to read that. But I, I will just give a little indication of what's in it. And again, it's posted on our website right now. There were some copies of it, hard copies right now, so some people in the audience might have them if you want to look at something specific with, with your neighbors. Okay. Resolution adopting local law number two of 2011 clarifying that natural gas and or petroleum exploration, extraction, support activities, and the storage, transfer, treatment, or disposal of natural gas and or petroleum exploration and production wastes is prohibited in the town of Ulysses. Mm -hmm. Whereas the town has the authority to adopt the local law referred to above, hereafter the local law pursuant to Article 9, Section 1 of the New York State Constitution and Section 10 of the New York State Municipal Home Rule Law, and whereas the New York Court of Appeals has held that a town, in quotes, is not ob obligated to permit the exploitation of any and all natural resources within the town as a permitted use if limiting that use is a reasonable exercise of its police powers to prevent damage to the rights of others and to promote the interests of the community as a whole, the citation is included afterwards, and whereas the power to regulate land use through the zoning powers is expressly delegated to towns in the New York State Statute of Local Governments, Section 10.6, and the New York State Town Law, Section 261, and Whereas the local law is not directed at the regulatory scheme for the operation of natural gas wells under the oil, gas, and solution mining law of New York State. This local law addresses land use and nuisance concerns and the, the protection of the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the town of Ulysses and the enhancement of its physical environment and is intended to only incidentally impact the state law set forth in New York State Environmental Conservation Law, Article 23. And whereas, pursuant to page one of Article 1 of the Ulysses Zoning Law of 2007, the purpose of this zoning law of the town of Ulysses is, in part, to promote the health, safety, and general welfare of the community, to lessen congestion in the streets, to secure safety from fire, panic, and other dangers, to provide adequate light and air, to prevent overuse of land, to avoid undue concentration of population, to facilitate the adequate provision of transportation, water, sewerage, parks, and to restrict and regulate the size of buildings and other structures, the percentage of lots that may be occupied, the size of yards, the density of population, and the use of buildings, structures, and land for trade, industry, residence, or other purposes in order to preserve, foster, and enhance the native beauty and rural character of one of the most picturesque and charming communities in the Finger Lakes region of New York State. Okay. And further states, quote, Ulysses is a community well known for its fine vistas of farmland hills and Cayuga Lake, unquote. And whereas Town of Ulysses zoning law provides that Quote, the regulations, restrictions, and boundaries set forth in this zoning law may be amended, supplemented, changed, or repealed by the town board pursuant to local law. And whereas the zoning law of the town of Ulysses, section 2.1, provides in part, quote, any use not specifically set forth as a permitted use in any zoning district shall be expressly prohibited in that zone. A use specifically set forth as a permitted use in one zoning district shall not be permitted in another zoning district unless it is specifically set forth as a permitted use in such district." End quote. And whereas the exploration for natural gas and or petroleum, the extraction of natural gas and or petroleum, and the storage, transfer, treatment, or disposal of natural gas and or petroleum, exploration and production wastes is not specifically set forth as a permitted use in any zoning district and is therefore prohibited in the town of Ulysses, and whereas the definition of extractive industry in the zoning law read together with the standards for the extractive industry in section 17.11 clearly apply to removal of minerals such as sand, gravel, and clay. The standards refer to removal of more than 500 tons or 350 cubic yards, whichever is less, or a mineral from the earth which is a measurement for sand, gravel, and clay, not the extraction of gas and oil. This amendment to the zoning law removes any possibly possible ambiguity 
in the term extractive industry. And whereas it is the intent of the town board by this amendment to the town of Ulysses zoning law to clarify that natural gas and or petroleum exploration and extraction and the associated uses of land for heavy industrial uses involved with exploration or extraction of natural gas and or petroleum have not been and are not permitted uses of land under the town of Ulysses zoning law. In addition, the absence of these activities from the list of permitted uses is a reasonable exercise of the town's police powers to prevent damage to the rights of citizens who would otherwise be negatively affected by such uses and to promote the interests of the community as a whole. And whereas, we're almost getting there, the local law is enacted to protect and promote the health, safety, and general welfare of present and future residents of the town of Ulysses. The local law is an exercise of the town's police power, its power to prohibit public nuisance and a land use regulation des designed to protect the town and its residents from adverse effects and impacts that would result if natural gas and or petroleum exploration and extraction and or the storage transfer treatment application or disposal of natural gas and or petroleum exploration and production wastes were allowed within the town. As set forth more fully in the appendix attached hereto and incorporated herein by reference, there is mounting evidence that widespread negative environmental impacts have resulted from or are reasonably expected to result from natural gas and or petroleum exploration, extraction, and related operations in other areas of the country, including negative impacts on groundwater quality, surface water quality, air quality, traffic, scenic and natural resources, neighborhood and community character, vegetation and habitats. And whereas the local law is in conformance with the Town of Ulysses Comprehensive Plan, most recently amended in 2009, as set forth more fully in the appendix, and whereas the local law enhances protection of unique natural areas, as set forth more fully in the appendix, and whereas notice of a public hearing on the local law was duly advertised in the Ithaca Journal for June 29, 2011, at 7 p.m. at the Trumansburg Elementary School Auditorium, and whereas said public hearing duly had held on said date, time, and place, and all parties in attendance were permitted an opportunity to speak in favor of or in opposition to the local law or any part thereof, and whereas the Town of Ulysses provided an opportunity for members of the public to submit comments in writing in favor of or in opposition to the local law or any part thereof for a period of 21 days from June 14 until July 6, 2011, and whereas pursuant to the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act, SEQRA, and its implementing regulations at 6 NYCRR Part 617, adoption of said local law is an unlisted action for which the town board of the town of Ulysses, acting as lead agency in environmental review with respect to the adoption of the local law and utilizing type 1 procedures, has on August 10, 2011, made a negative declaration of environment determination of environmental significance after having reviewed and accepted as adequate the long environmental assessment form parts one and two prepared by the town's planning staff and where as the town board agrees it is important to make these clarifications to the town of Ulysses zoning law because the exploration for natural gas and or petroleum the extraction of natural gas and or petroleum and related operations in the town of Ulysses would pose a significant threat to its residents health safety and general welfare now therefore be it resolved that the Town Board of the Town of Ulysses hereby adopts Local Law Number 2 of the year 2011 to amend the Zoning Law of the Town of Ulysses, a copy of which is attached here too, and made a part of this resolution. And it is further resolved that the Town Clerk is hereby authorized and directed to file the said local law with the Secretary of State as required by law. And then there's an appendix to the resolution adopting this local law where the town board of the town of Ulysses hereby makes and adopts the following findings, which I'm not going to read, but they're they're all um, they're all related to um, particular categories. One is how the local law is in accordance with the 2009 comprehensive plan of the town of Ulysses, and um, that that's pretty extensive. And then um, how the local law. Um, and then the unique natural areas and how they fit in with the local law. 
then we have some findings on state and federal regulation and oversight concerns that include or not, but are not limited to and we have um, several items there with uh, citations for the, the, the information that we looked at to come to these findings. Um, then we have general concerns related to drilling for natural gas on the health, safety, and welfare of the town of Ulysses and its residents. Um, we have risks, findings on risks to water that include but are not limited to a pretty long list. Uh, we have um, site findings on risks to, that we find to air quality, uh, risks uh, to health, uh, and then um, findings on community impact that are also very So that's, that's the appendix that, um, and with all the citations to what we use. So who wants to move this law? I would like I to. I think you should. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait a long time. I know. You can move it. And I'll second it. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you. So some discussion. Would any board members like to? say anything in discussion? I, I definitely have a statement. Um, and uh, I would like everyone to know that, um, of course, as Lucia said, this is not being taken lightly, this decision. Um, we realize that our energy has to come from somewhere. Um, and we realize that there isn't a comprehensive energy plan for our country. Um, this is unfortunate, and um, we're stuck in the middle of it. Um, since 2009, when I became aware of this, um, uh, it has really sucked me in. And um, I, my husband is here, and he's been supporting me through a lot of years of looking at this. Um, I, I miss him and my family. I have, would <laughs> certainly be doing other things, um, but I'm really compelled to be um, working on this issue uh, for many, many hours. Um, there are many facets to this issue. There are costs and benefits. Um, but uh, as I'm looking at it, the benefits are not just um, uh, economic. You have to look at the environmental costs and the costs to the community as a whole. And I would emphasize that there are costs to the community as a whole. Um, we also need to look at the current state of federal and, um, and state protections and regulations and such. Um, so from my own personal perspective, um, I think there's mounting evidence that there are a lot of problems. Um, uh, the regulations are not adequate, um, the drilling is moving too fast, the methods are not safe enough, the regulations are not in place, our taxation system is not adequate, and the impact on communities is simply too high. Um, these are just a few. I guess above all, I would like to make sure that our water, is, um, water quality is preserved for the town of Ulysses and those in our region. Um, there is a lot of wastewater that um, has to go somewhere, and I don't want to be responsible for shipping it to another community. Perhaps when drilling is, is not exempt from the Safe Drinking Water Act, perhaps when the chemicals uh, considered hazardous waste in other industries are considered hazardous waste in the oil and gas industry, perhaps when the state and federal regulations are tightened, um, then we could reassess this law. Um, but right now, the risks for the community as a whole are just far too great. Um, we need to be looking at a sustainable future, and I don't think this is part of it. Um, I think we all need to consider this a wake-up call, that um, our oil and gas reserves are, are limited. I think we need to be as strongly advocating uh, for alternative and clean energies and to use those clean energies. We need to turn off the lights when we're not using them. We need to turn down the heat in the winter. We need to turn up the air conditioning in the summer. We need to carpool and be aware every single day of the energy that we're using. We use natural gas. We need to be thinking about how we can use less or none. So now it's time for a change, and we need to walk the walk um, to be part of a better future. With regard to walking the walk, though, Liz, like, that's a great point, and it's one that we've been talking about a lot in this town hall recently, and we are, once we have a little more time, 
<laughs> we're, if that's ever, we're, we're very committed to trying to do everything we can within the town to, to make our energy use as low as possible and to do whatever we can to promote energy efficiency in, in our community and we we have a grant with a few other municipalities and some things have been done there's more that's being talked about last year we um, moved to all of the electricity from the town coming from renewable resources um, as a policy um, we're, we're so we're very committed to it and I completely agree 100 percent with everything that she says and and I just wanted to say a little bit about why I really feel like this is, is so um, appropriate for, for our community at this time. The town of Ulysses has a long and dynamic history of both land use planning and zoning. And during the process for the most recent 2009 update of our comprehensive plan, particular characteristics in the town were identified as being very important to residents. The rural character, agricultural lands, and natural resources were all identified as highly valued in contributing to a positive quality of life. The Comprehensive Plan vision statement, which was intended to guide future actions, recognizes the value of our agricultural heritage, our natural resources, scenic view sheds, our environmental assets, the tourism potential, recreation opportunities, and the overall beauty of the town. The land use, future land use plan calls for growth in designated areas and that is appropriate in scale for our town and is balanced and sustainable for the future. After a great deal of investigation and consideration of available information, two years <laughs> worth of intensive effort, I strongly believe that natural gas extraction as currently proposed in our area is not in any way consistent with the Town of Ulysses land use planning goals. This activity has never been permitted in our zoning law and this local law tonight makes it clear that it is still the case and gives extensive documentation as to why it is an unacceptable land use activity for our town. There were a couple of pieces of information over the course of all this education and investigation that, that really resonated with me. One was an analysis that um, was done by Art Pierce working with Darby, Kylie and others um, for the Tompkins County Natural Gas Drilling Task Force Working Group on mapping and they did a presentation in our town on that I think in the beginning of June, mid of May, something like that. Um, and they were working on mapping just to give some visual indication and a little summary for communities on the extent and potential impacts of drilling as it's proposed by the New York State DEC's draft mm -hmm. generic envir supplemental environmental impact statement. Um, and using available data, data on the land leases in the town and a proposed drilling unit spacing of one square mile, so 640 acres, he estimated that 14 square miles in Ulysses, and, and also using the compulsory integration that's proposed, 14 square miles in the town of Ulysses out of 32 square miles total for our town's area outside the village, 44% of the land area of the town could have wells and the high truck traffic, noise, light, land disturbance, and other intensive support activities required associated with it. So, I mean, I was just so struck by 44% of the town area distributed throughout the town, not even in any concentrated in one area, could be used for <coughs> heavy industrial activity, in essence, a heavy industry zone. And this is not appropriate scale, balanced, or sustainable land use for our town. And the other is a, a very recent study by the European Union Parliament Economic and Policy Division evaluated all of the information available from the United States since the inception of gas drilling using hydrofracking. Um, they're doing it to, because they're considering a, a European Union-wide ban and the United States has the longest record of the use of this technology. Um, and it's a very comprehensive report and one of their conclusions is the technology for shale gas development has characteristics which have a possible high risk for environmental damages and hazards to human health even when applied, applied properly. One of the unavoidable impacts is a huge <coughs> land consumption and major landscape changes as well as the well density must be very high in order to fracture the source rocks at the large scale for access to the stored gas. And so I feel that the costs of this type of land use to the town are too high, the risks too great, and the regulations as proposed currently too completely inadequate 
for us to do anything other than what we are doing tonight in adopting this resolution. something else I feel Please like use the microphone so we can yes hear. I'm sorry that I have a Bambi voice here and people can't hear me um, I am very heartened by this action and I really appreciate the town members and planning board and everybody who put work into coming up with this law and the town staff but I feel like it's just a beginning we are not an island in Ulysses we are surrounded by other we're, Seneca County and Schuyler and I feel like there needs to be a call to action of people that um, understand this issue. You can use the appendix to this law in trying to um, correct misinformation that's being put out there about the gas drilling, about uh, the economic impact and the environmental impact. and. Uh, I feel we have a duty to our neighbors as well as to ourselves to tell the truth about this issue. Um, coming here, I'm sorry I was late, I was coming from Massachusetts and drove through on Route 79 many, many signs of pro-gas drilling signs. So I think there's, there's some, uh, some education that needs to go on here and I feel like everyone in this room can be an educator. Uh, in regard to this. So that's what I'd like to say. Thank you. No further comments? Discussion? Okay. Ms. Thomas? Aye. Mr. Romer? Aye. Ms. Tyler? Aye. Mr. Furness? Aye. And Supervisor Roxanne? Aye. No. Aye. There are many people in this room who've put in a huge amount of time and effort um, to gathering information, to uh, educating the public, to helping to educate the board and um, support of this. And um, and I know you know there was concern that that we might not be moving quickly enough, but um, you know we were completely aware of the timeline and we we wanted to do it the way we felt we needed to do it and. That's how it's done, and we're we're very happy with what we what we have now. So um, thank you to everybody. Thank you.